show. Uh-huh. We rep our dogs, our Marines, rep our sailors, Navy, rep our soldiers, Army, Air Force, and our Coach Steve. This for veterans of all breeds, got some skills, then show me. Cause this thing for all y'all, show up when we roll call. Uh-huh. New type of veteran, uh-huh. together we better know better than uh-huh. entrepreneurs, we stepping in, making a lane that's different. Uh-huh. LCB, she my co-host. Tom TMR, you know we both rep for vets from coast to coast. And this, that, this, that GI show. Say this, this my time music. This my, this my time music. This my time music. This my, this my time music. This my time music. This my, this my time music. This my time music. This my, this my time music. Woo! Oh man, I guess we hype. Welcome to another episode of the GI Show. I am your host, TMR, a.k.a. the Marine Rapper, a.k.a. the guy that's actually outside for once, outside his real regular office. Anyway, we got a wonderful guest today, so let's get on vid chat. Let's see what's going on here. Let's type in his name, Lucky. All right. Bam. Lucky, what's going on? Hey, man, let's make it live. And babies. As you see, we're out here with Lucky. Aren't we lucky? He is an army vet. He is an artillery man. And he is a father of quadruplets. Welcome to the show, Lucky. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, I'm excited to be here. I'm excited too. As you see, we're wearing the wonderful, lovely pink for breast cancer awareness. He does have the pink bowl, so that's cool. I got some ink. It says mom with the... The pink background because my mom is a breast cancer survivor. She actually had a double mastectomy and actually she was pregnant with me. She chose me and then battled breast cancer and that, that contributed to the legend that I am. Wow. Way to start off the show, man. Lucky runs in your family. Yeah. Episode number seven. Yeah. That's what Lucky we're all about. Seven. Lucky number seven. Did you know from a young age that you're going to be a soldier, army soldier, or how'd that happen? I really like the army. I like the structure, I like the idea of traveling. I grew up in Los Angeles. I was confined to what, what immediately was around me, so I, I, didn't, I didn't want to be stuck there. I had some college. I was doing good in school. I brought it all together, and I was like, you know what? I'm 17. Mom signed this. Dad signed this. I'm out. I was already on the flight to Oklahoma going, what did I do? <laughs> Drill sergeants pick you up, take you in. I loved it. Um, I did eight years, and if I could still be in, I would, because I, I got developed as an adult. I learned skills that I know I won't get anywhere else. Yep. Um, I was, I was 20 years old. I couldn't even drink, and I was already, I already had a squad under me. I can. Uh, <laughs> I already had a squad under me, so I had responsibilities way ahead of my my age and that that helped me grow a lot one of the biggest things that i took away from a military career yeah actually wasn't completely army related mm-hmm. so i met the soldier up at fort drum that got injured while deployed and at fort drum the the winters were really bad and i developed a program around the around him named walkways for warriors um mm-hmm. and so if there's anything that as a vet and as as somebody who's who's served, you know, something that I can say, hey, you know what? What you can contribute also as a vet outside out uh, past your service is volunteering. Yeah. So I established this program and it eventually blew up. And the only reason that I had to stop it was because I did deploy to Afghanistan. Yeah. If a soldier got killed overseas yeah. while the family went ahead and buried, uh, laid their loved one to rest, yeah. our program would go in and we would take care of their grass. We would uh, mow their lawns. We would shovel snow. We would do whatever we could so that family had the peace of mind. So when they came back, that was one thing less to worry. And that's actually uh, one of the things that I'm trying to bring to um, Texas. I love serving and if I can make the life of somebody else better um, and that shows the commitment that I have towards you know my surroundings then yeah, yeah that's that's something that I'm, I'm really proud to do did you did you ever deploy did you go to like Iraq or Afghanistan or anything like I want to know are you legit you know what I'm saying is he legit let me drop my verbal resume here as a red leg aka artillery I went ahead and I did a 15 month tour in, in Iraq I uh, met the the love of my life Went ahead and married her. 
We got married, I went ahead and reclassed into aviation thinking, you know what, it's gonna be a desk job, it's gonna be chill, I'm gonna be inventory parts. Nope. Deployed to Afghanistan, loading up missiles, rockets, 50 cal, loading all sorts of munitions on the Kiowa and on the uh, Apache helicopter. 15 in Iraq, I did a tour in Afghanistan, and then unfortunately my injuries caught up to me from both of those uh, tours and the army said, hey, you know what, the army's changing, you can get out now and we'll, we'll cut you a little bit or you can stay in and it's unknown. As much as I heart the army, the love of my family came over the love of the army. And it, it wasn't an easy decision, um, <clears throat> but I knew that the army, w I needed a solid year because like you said earlier, um, oh, I didn't have four, I had five. And on top of those five, I had seven in one year. I had twins and both of them passed away. Um, and, uh, because of that pregnancy, uh, my wife went ahead and dropped mad eggs, dropped five eggs. All five got picked up, you know, because I still had that artillery body that, you know, can make, make it babies. Layla, uh, named after uh, Mohammed Ali's daughter, passed away. Um, and so I have these four kids at home. I know the army's not going to give me all this time to change, feed, burp, and then put back to bed round the clock they never see me at work so i was like you know what i did my time in the army the army is going to pay me back with school and everything but i need to focus in on my school all my family now where did you go what are you doing now now you de on daddy duty or what's up man what are you, what are you up to now well i'm always on duty in it like it's all my clothes all my shoes you know it's around me get it duty because the babies and pampers yeah. i mean you can do it too if you want to drum roll yeah. See, I got it back, Jazz. Ha ha. Jazz took my drum roll the last episode. Whatever. Yeah, Jazz and Kelsey. S speaking of Kelsey. Speaking of Kelsey, where's she at? Well, I was honestly hoping that the baddest chicken MMA was going to be here with me. She's, she's a Marine. Marine. Yes. She, she's, she's a canine handler. handler. Yeah. She's, she's an, an MMA fighter. Boom. Dude, I get to meet Kelsey? Hi, Kelsey. Hi, Lucky. Hi, Kelsey. Big fan, big fan. Now you want to come into the show, Kelsey. I, <sighs> I, I w went to a remote location. You know, I set up this whole army thing. I see how it is. Okay, let's see that. That looks kind of Can you tell us about this thing? What's, what's up with that thing? This is actually a training round. If you turn it around and you see all the compartments where um, your uh, munitions would go. I'm super proud of being, being an artillery or a red leg. I got the cross cannons tattooed on me. Because sometimes... Can we see that? Can we? Oh, yeah. So, Artillery. yeah, the, the cross cannons are uh, because those were some of the best yeah. slash worst years of your life. Yeah. Anybody who's been in and has had to do some things, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And, then, and then what's, the, what's these birds? The birds are for uh, Amber and Danielle. Yeah. And those are my twin daughters that passed away initially. Um, at the hospital we were at, when they die, they put up a leaf on the door so no nurse or doctor comes in and says, hey, you know how your kid's doing? knowing that your kids just died. So I went ahead and tattooed those, those leaves on there. My kids now, they're a handful and they really do overshadow a lot of things. I like looking at my arm and going, you know what? As a father and as a man, I was focused in on my twin girls and I was ready to, to be the, the father for them. And I, and I do miss them still. I haven't yeah. forgotten about them. Of course. Having four kids must have been like a task to do. Like, Especially because your, you know, your wife's pregnant and stuff like that. How did they figure out how to like get the babies out of there? And we, could they just go to a regular doctor? What? How did that? How did they get here? To to say how they got here, you gotta take take a step back. After after they after my wife got pregnant, yeah. Um, we went ahead and we were just getting over the loss of our twin daughters. Yeah. And so. She's like, she's telling me, oh man, I'm feeling nauseous, I'm feeling tired, my back hurts, my knee, my knees, and I was like, you know what, uh -oh. you just went through all of this, your body's just recovering, you know, no big deal, yeah. and she's like, no, no, I'm pregnant. Okay, what are you, what are you doing here, Mr. One-Up? I mean, I got my Marine Corps cup here, and you just got a you know, freaking army, man, yeah, I but swear. I'm, I'm a semi-finalist, I didn't make it to the top, you know, at the Marine Corps. At that, at that point, we go to the ultrasound, and they're, they're like, hold up, I gotta go get my boss. And I see this blob of stuff, and my wife's like, what's going on? 
And I'm like, I think we're having triplets. The doctor comes back in, he does um, the ultrasound and he goes, you're having quintuplets. In the middle of processing that, he's like, you have to terminate four of them. We're like, you haven't given us not two seconds to process the idea that we just are going to have five I kids mean. and now you're telling us that, you know, you gotta... So you can only keep one. You can only keep one. We got on the internet and uh, we went ahead and called up the number one doctor in the nation, which was in New York. Um, the guy was no help, zero help. I called him, uh, we called him up and we we're like, hey, you know what? We're having quintuplets, we need help. Uh, can you give us information on birth weight, development, stages, everything? And he's like, yeah, I could, but you have to meet my patient. And I told him, you know what, I'm in the army. I, I can't give you my wife and I can't attend to her and I can't be driving down from Fort Drum, New York to the city. It's a long drive. It's... Yeah. And so he's like, well, too bad, so sad. And we're like, all right. So we went to number two. And that actually worked out because as soon as we decided to go with the number two guy, um, Hurricane Sandy hit uh, New, New York, York City and that would have been a total mess. He went ahead and helped us out with everything. Overnight, he emailed us, he uh, sent us paperwork, he sent us everything that we needed. Um, and we finally said, I, I called him up and I was like, how far along does my wife have to be so that she can still be seen by you and I, I can't remember if it was 15 or 18 weeks uh, but no more and I asked my wife I was like look we just lost kids do you want to risk it for the biscuit and go out there and she's like yeah but who's gonna take care of you and I was like you know what I got I got a whole army behind me I'm, I'm gonna be good uh, she's like okay so I sent her out there she went into the emergency room they checked her out they went okay she stayed there for some five months. Um, we had a few um, scares. One of the bigger ones was I got all my ink work done while she was pregnant and I didn't tell her about it until I went out there and saw her and she's like, what's on your arm? And I was like, oh, because at that point I got used to it, you know, seeing everything. I was like, nothing. And she, she got so mad she started contracting and the nurse is like, what did you do? And I was like, nothing. <laughs> the woman body isn't able to carry and deliver so many babies. Mm -hmm. um, so what needs to be done is you have to get the C-section. Yeah. And this was, this was on a large scale. Each baby had its own, um, had its own doctor, its own team of nurses, its own um, uh, anesthesiologist. Um, so you have five teams in this room that are all waiting and they're like, all right, baby's, baby A is out and team A comes in, uh, doctor receives it, they start working on it, baby B comes out, team B receives it. Wow. Yeah. Didn't they like film the whole thing or something like that? Didn't yeah. they like have footage? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it looked like this. We're so grateful for everything. Just the whole experience is amazing. It's just, it's just like, wow, really? I really get to be this happy? That's amazing. That was crazy, man. That was, yeah. December 26th, they were born. <laughs> we went ahead. I tried getting a flight out to Arizona. But anybody who's been in northern New York, the north country, or Fort Drum knows exactly what I mean when a nice storm hits. Airport shut down. Finally had to drive like seven hours to get a flight. The only flight that was going out yeah. to get to um, to get to Arizona. So I made it, but I was already four hours late at that point. Well, you got that no quit mentality, you know, yeah. and especially when it comes to your family. That's what everybody thinks, right? Hey, this is Lucky. Thanks for tuning in to the GI Show. See you next week. Uh, shout out to my boys and the 2nd Battalion, 20th Field Artillery, my boy Bishop, my boy Blood, um, I miss you, and my boy Vic that I think uh, is out in the desert right now. Uh, but yeah, tune in for some good stuff. See, I mean, we don't hold that big of a grudge towards the Army. We love this. You did not pay me to have you on the show. Marines love Army. Genealogy, thanks for watching the show. 
Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to The GI Show here on YouTube, as well as follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Everything is at The GI Show. Make it real easy for you guys. You know what I'm saying? Also, if you wanna check out last week's video, it's right there. All you have to do is click the flag. If you wanna check out next week's video, all you have to do is click right there. The, the Marine poster thing that says ready. Yeah. So, until next week.